with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we now uh, move on to our next panel discussion. Last but not the least, uh, hybrid workspaces unlocking uh, new opportunities, uh, which will be moderated by uh, Mr. Ashutosh Limaye. He is the senior director and head uh, strategic advisory and valuations at Anarok Group. Uh, with over 20 years of experience in urban planning and governance, uh, he has played a lead a role in market intelligence, forecasting and assessment of uh, policies, legislations and regulatory mechanisms uh, for the delivery of infrastructure services. Uh, or for the, uh, on the panel, we have uh, uh, Mr. Ashish Shukla, Managing Director and Founder of Corporate Edge uh, Serviced Offices. Uh, with over 30 years of experience in the real estate, hospitality and retail sectors. Uh, Mr. Shukla, uh, as founder of a Corporate Edge, uh, his vision uh, is to create a formidable brand in flexible workspaces solution space in India and the Middle East over the next five years. Mr. Shukla is uh, uh, being joined by Mr. Kaushik Banerjee, who is the Executive Director, Head of Operations at Table Space Technologies, an ex-veteran with accomplished military service in the Indian Army who transitioned into the corporate world with specialization in financial investments from IIM. Uh, for Mr. Banerjee, excellence is a never-ending journey and challenging the status quo to generate innovative solutions is his quintessential quest. Also on the panel, we have uh, Mr. Utkarsh Kabatra. Uh, he's the founder of MyHQ. He started MyHQ Workspaces in 2016, where he currently serves as co-founder and chief executive officer. It's a venture-backed startup and India's leading market space uh, place for flexible workspace solutions. An IIT Delhi alumnus, Mr. Kabatra has previously worked with uh, Helion Ventures, Opera Solutions and HSBC. With that, uh, I hand over the session uh, to uh, Mr. Lemaye. Uh, would request him to take the panel discussion forward, please. Ashutosh, you are on mute. Ashutosh, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Friday evening. So, uh, already in Friday evening mode. So, uh, uh, a delight uh, of uh, having uh, all the stalwarts here uh, in this session. Very interesting uh, concept. Uh, I think uh, uh, last 18, 24 months, uh, the global events, the, the pandemic has fast tracked uh, several changes. Uh, and uh, I think we, we are today at a stage where we know that uh, it's, it's a blended model that is going to go forward in terms of uh, uh, working from home, working from uh, satellite offices or, or, or the shared workspaces, and then sometimes working from offices, uh, the conventional offices or the head, headquarters. Uh, so I think uh, uh, this is a, a, a sector that is going to grow uh, exponentially, um, in, in my view, uh, in India. And, and uh, we, we have stalwarts uh, who are actually making that uh, happen uh, in, in India. Uh, uh, so uh, let me start uh, the, the question uh, with uh, Utkarsh uh, first. And it's a tech-related question, Utkarsh. Uh, so uh, you started this uh, about uh, six years ago. Uh, and and uh, what has changed, particularly uh, on the tech side? And, and tech side doesn't change uh, alone. It, it brings a lot of changes uh, outside the tech realm as well. Uh, so, you know, what was it then and what is it now? I think Utkash, you are on mute, not Utkash. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. I did the same mistake. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, hi, and thanks uh, for having me here. Uh, uh, this feels great. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think about technology, this is a long one. Uh, but if you look at real estate in general, I think this is the first question that always comes in. What is the role of technology and what it plays? Uh, uh, it's it's fascinating how, uh, how things have changed or evolved over the last five, seven years. Uh, it essentially, if you look at real estate in general, technology to begin with, just started as a discovery platform where you're looking at discovery of spaces. Uh, over time, it's moved into more data where you're looking at a bigger role in terms of tracking ownership, tracking how uh, the CRE uh, space is getting utilized uh, in each hyper local area, which helps different landlords or uh, companies make better decisions. Uh, but now with COVID, if you look at it, uh, 
this has been further accelerated with more and more companies adopting hybrid workspace solutions, uh, which is the sort of the key word here. Uh, earlier companies would just look at uh, uh, getting one big office, uh, but now with uh, work from anywhere, you're looking at shared workspaces in a much more practical way. And that essentially increases the efficiency of utilization of the real estate one and that also increases the convenience for the employees so it's a complete win-win but uh to add, but to ensure that it goes in seamlessly within the company there is a great role of technology in one ensuring that the experience at each space is controlled uh so for example when a company has about 100 such satellite offices now how do you ensure that the experience at all of this is controlled whether it's through a central wi-fi ma management system central key access system uh so all of that comes into play here one uh, the second is uh, in a pure play, uh, uh, giving the truest uh, flexibility of people uh, to the people. I think it's important to give them access to spaces at just tap of a button. So we've had to personally in, in, in my HQ, we've had to actually build solutions for companies, for corporate admins now who want to track their employees across about hundred centers, across 10 cities now who want to give access to certain kinds of centers, to certain different kinds of com different kinds of employees who want to book spaces by an hourly basis. So all of that has kind of come in, uh, in, in the last one, one, one to two years for us. And that's sort of been exciting and, uh, challenging, uh, to say the least, uh, where, where we've had to, where we have had to develop much faster than we would have earlier anticipated. Uh, but it's still early days, uh, if I put it out there. Uh, so yeah, that, that's how I'd see it. Lovely. And then panelists, feel free uh, to uh, add, add your uh, comments. Uh, a more free-flowing uh, discussion uh, will be a lot more beneficial. Uh, so while uh, I, I might uh, direct a question to a particular panelist, uh, but please do feel free uh, to uh, chip in. So that, that's good to know. Uh, and and uh, Koshik, maybe I, I'll uh, ask you, uh, we, we have uh, basically two main types uh, in, in this flexi workplace. One is uh, this managed offices, which, which typically uh, deals with uh, relatively longer tenures or longer occupation periods. And, and then we have the co-working spaces, which offer the maximum flexibility, right, from hourly basis to uh, longer uh, tenures. Uh, so uh, what has been your experience so far um, in Indian situations? Uh, uh, I know both have uh, very good prospects, but uh, do, do, do they have a different clientele, uh, whether they need to be approached differently? what can grow uh, faster than the other, if at all, uh, if there is any difference. So what's your experience have been? So thanks, Ashutosh, uh, for inviting me for this discussion. And nice to meet all the panelists here. So primarily, you see, post-COVID, one thing which is coming up today's current talent or current workforce will start asking as to Earlier, when we started career, it was we have to come to office. But today, the question is coming to why do we need to come to office? And this question on why do we come to need offices has given rise to the concept of hybrid workspaces, where, as earlier, one of the panelists was alluding to on the requirement of uh, technology. Now, this is uh, coming up because the enterprise big corporates are feeling that how do I channel my workforce in the office in the sense two years of COVID has proven one thing that if it's a desk based job you can deliver it from anywhere but that is not serving the whole purpose so you come to office more for you know your brainstorming sessions your interaction the people interaction everybody is important now hybrid works provides the solution where or depending on the business model of each client, the, um, the solution providers like us can provide you development solution in line with your business requirements. So be it a development uh, company, be it a delivery-based company, be it a product-based company, each will have its own requirement. So there the hybrid space uh, concept where you design as per the enterprise clients thing, uh, assumes importance. While the earlier, uh, the erstwhile uh, the model of co-working will also survive side by side because that's a different requirement where, uh, where a, a 
a company feels that okay i require four seats five seats i want to pay per use seats so uh, that's uh, that's the model where they would like to get into these type of situations so the essence is that we cannot have in in this current times you cannot have a fixed model for anything it is the world is evolving to our more design as you require concepts with change as a big thing on it that today a company decide the typical way of using its space for its uh, its delivering it tomorrow the situation may change so much that he may like to have a different way of how the work, how his work is produced so this is where you know the managed spaces the enterprise where you sit with the and it is not only a space solution which you are providing you are also taking into account what's your talent thinking uh, how your talent is uh, focused in your area of work and you tend towards a customized flexible solution so in a way uh, your real estate expense is taken up by another agency and they provide you the wherewithal uh, to deliver your work so that's off your balance sheet and you uh, and the uh, you can you can focus on your major areas and leave this plan to the enterprise delivery company so that's my idea of, of, of how this market is to evolve very helpful kashik uh, well said uh, uh, ashish uh, uh, why why uh, one when one looks at conventional office space uh, a very easy to understand yardstick in terms of uh, the occupier's affordability or requirement is the rents so uh, very easy uh, to to understand uh, the, the budgets and and then the supply could be uh, uh, talked about accordingly Uh, but when it comes to uh, you know, co-working, shared workplaces, etc., uh, would uh, a good operator be able to uh, manage uh, all kind of budget segments the uh, the occupier or end user is looking at? Uh, whether it's uh, it's possible to be profitable and efficient uh, to to service different budget uh, categories, or or do you think uh, one needs to have different models for that? yeah uh so hi ashutosh and thank you for inviting uh, you know us for the session a uh, pleasure to be here and meet the panelists as well so uh to answer your question i would say that what corporate has been doing is uh, focusing on a particular strategy and that strategy is on one segment of the market and not across board uh like the hotels like the uh, you know various industries like airline and other people uh, that have been if i can say in the service spaces uh have categorized and have segmented the offering uh it's very difficult to say that you can master all of them right uh while the consumer exists in all categories right and to add to what i think uh you know kashik was just talking about uh from the way from the place where we see things uh you know uh, it is curation of services based on the consumer needs is what you have to do at all points in time and uh, you know today we've got requests from some of the enterprise solution people uh, that they want a live counter for food as well in their office now it's a, it's a specific requirement but you need to do it right so and i think that goes back to what koshik was talking about that we are seeing uh, what what we as a business category are giving to the industry is primarily the flexibility and the customization and a mix of both right and then the flexibility comes in the form of you know hybrid working flexibility comes in the form of uh, you know utilization because instead of taking a you know a 100 team member office with a rostered way that people are talking about because everybody is talking about that it will not be a you know five day or a six day working that used to be the case they will call only on three days a week or two days a week is the future going to be so if that be the case you can do a roster and you can have you know a place where uh, only let's say 50 people but you can still cater to 100 people right so these are the things that flexibility we are bringing so to answer your question yes uh, the three categories exist but we focus on one category which is you know uh, because all our centers are in leed certified buildings so they are expensive buildings we cannot cater to the low cost uh, in these places 
but uh, you know so be it and we are happy to do so and happy to we have that positioning so ashutosh i think if you look at if you look at it uh, from this question standpoint you've got office which i think a couple of days, uh, days back or a couple of weeks back launched office gold which i think would be somewhere at a 20000 plus price point while they've always originally been at a 10000 plus price point oyo has tried its hand with three categories like innovate workflow and power station so you've had brands which have honestly tried this uh, but i think what ashish has uh, rightly said is that it's always brands which have focused on a singular category have always been the winners so at least uh, i think as of now i think one one brand one category one kind of clientele is the path for a lot of the companies and i think that's the better path to take but will this happen later on i think everyone tries and keeps on trying <laughs> to do things because they want a bigger market bigger pie you know, in the market uh, utkarsh to add to what you're talking about if you look at the industry at large which airline could run an equally successful budget airline nobody which uh, you know best a hotel chain on the top tier could run a budget model they've tried but it's not because the dna of the organization takes years to build and you cannot it's not just launching a product category right it's about doing justice from the word go to the entire service delivery cycle which could be in our category run 8 years 10 years we we've, we've had people uh, we are servicing for the last 8 years in corporate edge so yeah <clears throat> absolutely absolutely that it kar yeah and i think uh, india is a big market i think uh, india will present opportunity uh, across the budget segments i think uh, it, it is for the entrepreneurs to decide which ones uh, they want to cater to uh, and and uh, while we speak of those opportunities and surely this this type is here to stay uh, we we today are just between 2% and 8% in terms of the real estate that uh, the flexi work space uh, uh, consumes of the total office space different agencies pay it differently but the range is uh, in, in single digits uh, nonetheless but what what's the market size uh, the, the three of you think uh, that that india can present and and i'm sure uh, there is a uh, there is enough uh, pie for everybody uh, to really uh, look for uh, but uh, where where are we uh, today and 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 what's the uh, growth uh, the prospects so i can uh, i can uh, initiate the thought here yeah. i was doing actually a, uh, we are actually looking at uh, the overall industry right now if i was to look at it the office stock is close to about in 2020 is about 800 odd million in india which uh, the way we see it is in the next you know by 2030 if i was to call it it would perhaps move to about uh, a double about 1900 uh, million is what is the projection that i was reading couple of reports on and uh, today the uh, you know uh, industry is only 39 million for flexible which is uh, offerings like table space and offerings like corporate edge all of us put together is about 30 to 39 to 40 million which the way i see it if it is about you know 10 to 12% penetration would move towards about a 250 million uh, square feet space which is a substantial bump in terms of uh, and if i was to compare it to us which is already sitting at about 12 to 13% penetration for flexible spaces uh i mean our space is going to grow at a cagr of about 20 25% odd uh, for the next 10 years the way i see it uh and the sharper operators will pick up and table space has been you know uh, looking at larger enterprise solutions which is an interesting uh, model and we are getting a lot of inquiries on that side as well so uh if that answers your question Yeah. Um, uh, any additions, Ashish, uh, from your side to what Ashish mentioned? So, Ashish, another thing is that if you see today's reports also on the IT industry, from two fifty billion, they want yeah. to come to three fifty, and that's a huge uh, jump. And uh, and the amount of capex investment which uh, Nirmala Sitaram has announced in her budget, so all this uh, propelled to one aspect that the space requirement will continue to build up. and also the industry is realizing that the, the operators like us give them that model of flexibility as well as enable hybrid work so uh, 
hybrid working is not only that you work from home and you work from office, but hybrid workspaces becomes important as to what, as I said, my opening statement, what are you coming to office for and you're delivering what? So that is that becoming one of the focus areas, then this is going to be a more, and the time, because the another thing was, uh, which uh, COVID has said is the, the time to market, the timings. So any conventional company, if they follow their conventional model, they will take a lot of time. Whereas uh, houses like us, we move at a very fast TAT. So that, so, you know, his time to market reduces his holding cost, which, which also puts a flip to his revenue thing. So all these things factoring in, uh, I, I, my thinking is I agree with what the other panelist uh, Ashish was also saying is that the graph looks upward. That's the way I will take, put it. So Ashutosh, were you looking yeah. for a number? So I was just doing the on over the top maths here as well. So I was looking at uh, roughly, I think India has about 3000 centers, uh, 300 seats per center. You're looking at 10,000 average seat price. You're looking at about $1.2 billion. And that's on the highest side, I would say, as a market right now for the co-working yeah. or the, uh, sister, for the uh, managed office solution right now. But as Ashish rightly mentioned, it's a growing market. And how you look at the growth of the market post-COVID is earlier, as an example, if a company of 500 would set up a 500-seater office, now, uh, with the advent of hybrid, they're looking at instead of 500 seater central office, they're looking at a 200 seater, maybe a 250 seater central office, the remaining 200 seats in satellite offices and about 100 people on flexible completely on a per day basis near their home. So that's the potential scope that's come in cause of COVID. While the current market size is extremely is seems small, but if you look at the overall scheme, uh, in, in, in New York, et cetera, it's expected uh, commercial real estate pre-COVID uh, co-working was about 15% of the commercial market. I think that number will now go about to about 30% easily uh, with the with COVID, et cetera. So you can expect the similar similar trend, hopefully in the top tier cities in, in India. Yeah, I had a point to that, Utkarsh, uh, you know, when, so we also thought during COVID that the hub and spoke model companies will take so that people can work from near home in large teams as well. But, uh, you know, what I what is evolving and what I'm seeing right now happening is that the days when they want to work together are hybrid, not the location where they will get together. The location is still becoming very central to where they will position themselves well or which is suitable to them and then get together to build the culture on the days when they get together. That's what we are kind of seeing it. I, I don't know if that's kind of makes sense and goes uh, to what you were talking about in terms of a hub and spoke model. <clears throat> so uh, aligned Ashish, but I think what, so if I give an example of one of the companies we're working with right now, uh, there are about 1500 employees. Earlier they had just one central office in Bangalore, but now, for example, they know that they have to set up a smaller office in Delhi, NCR as one, in Bombay as one, in Bangalore as one, and Hyderabad as one. So this setting up smaller offices here while allowing hybrid, they'll still have the central office in Bangalore. So yeah. that's the, so I'm guessing uh, it won't be, you're not looking at satellite office in cities, maybe like tier two cities right away. You're looking at at least any big company now covering all the top, top, top three, four cities for sure as an office, which might be the hub and spoke. Uh, leg the spoke leg which which i'm kind of referring to absolutely no i think that's yeah. that's i agree with that right and then that actually uh, takes uh, to, to the next question that i had in my mind uh, is now demand side looks uh, really promising and and we all all are quite convinced about uh, you know, how how it can grow uh, but on the supply side uh, do, do you think the supply side uh, is uh, gearing itself to to provide the right kind of real estate the right kind of uh, it infrastructure or telecommunications infrastructure uh, i think uh, you know, the the tech part uh, the the talent or or the resources uh, uh, some some months back, it was uh, they call it the the period of uh, resignations. I would say where people were jumping jobs and, and added significant uh, increments. Uh, so that, that that's a variable component uh, that that goes in uh, in terms of managing tech, etc. Uh, so are, are we geared up on the supply side to to match uh, this kind of uh, spurge in demand? Uh, so maybe. Yeah, uh... Actually, please. Hmm. Okay, so. 
if I was to, I mean, since we focus on uh, lead certified buildings and uh, grade A supply and grade, I mean, CBD locations, uh, we do feel that there is dearth of supply. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that may not be a fair thing to say for the overall market. If we were to look at it, I think there is uh, there is enough supply because the churn has happened in a big manner. A lot of vacancies available in grade B and grade C, uh, the way we see it. Uh, and, you know, one of our buildings that we are operating in, I mean, had vacancy, but it has been picked up by largely flex operators. So uh, the corporates are still not deciding. They're still, sit, you know, sitting on the fence uh, from the where, uh, from the position where we see it. Uh, we, we, we have a lot of uh, walk arounds. We, we have a lot of visits, but the conversion and the confidence, because they don't know whether uh, another wave will happen or not. I mean, practically the way I see it is that the that COVID is over, uh, not only in India and across the globe, I think the signs are the same. Uh, but uh, to answer your question again, supply is in the in the grade A, it's kind of uh, low, but in grade B and C, it is abundant supply is there. Sure. Uh, Kaushik, uh, same, same observation uh, from your side. Touching, yeah, so touching on the uh, second of your point, which uh, talent is, is going, uh, talent war is going on on all sides, if you see. Uh, and if you read the report, uh, so that that will uh, will be there because as the demand uh, and the demand will multiply over times if we see how the market is evolving. So talent uh, scarcity to some extent will be there, but since this area is becoming interesting, more and more you you find uh, my observation has been that we are able to tap at uh, various uh, talent pools to get the required talent which you which you require for carrying out these things but uh, both will be as well supply is one point and agree with what ashish points where supply is one part and to your question ashutosh talent challenge will be there but that has that uh, increases or decreases as per the, the market conditions but this part of talent we are seeing across all sectors. Real estate is not the only thing. The IT industry has also been very hugely affected. So this is a typical market cycle that we have. Yeah. It will weather out time. And, and, and you mentioned about uh, market cycle. Uh, so uh, Utkarsh, uh, you uh, you run a, a marketplace. Uh, and, and what has been your experience? And, and in fact, all, all three uh, gentlemen, uh, is it that uh, the demand for such a flexi workplace uh, goes up when the, when the economy uh, is, is uh, kind of tight or, or softer because everybody thinks of uh, cost effective uh, solutions and, and reduce the capital expenditure uh, or uh, it is now uh, this cultural change is here uh, you know, to stay so irrespective of whether the economy is is booming stable or, or not so great uh, because of this cultural shift and because of the, the value proposition uh, this segment adds in terms of the services in, in terms of the ambience or, or, or uh, the, the, the cultural thing of it uh, so, irrespective of market cycles, um, this sector is poised uh, to, to grow. So, Utkar, starting with you, uh, and then we can have um, uh, Kaushik and, and Ashish to chip in as well. I think, yeah, obviously, Ashish has much larger experience than me, and he's seen much larger cycles, so I think he's best to answer it. But I'll give my two cents on the last five, six years of being in the industry here. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I think two major things that has happened in the industry, at least in my tenure till now has been one uh, i think with the law we, we work as a brand it changed the market quite a bit uh launch of it brought flexible workspaces in the sort of as a word which people got to know about it so i think that's one major thing that actually got uh, everyone excited about the market obviously how it turned out in the ipo etc was a bit disappointing but uh but largely that's what brought it in the limelight and then covid has ensured that it sustains I think that's that's the those are the two aspects I would put it. Uh, with COVID, you're looking at now companies, everyone thinking of it, everyone going for it. I, I would say post lockdown too, we have been in a situation where it's a supply constraint market, where there is much more demand, but there's not enough supply right now of 
of operators uh, many about 10 to 20 percent operators shut because of covid but now with a lot more companies uh use looking for managed office for co-working for hybrid solutions uh it's practically supply constraint right now if you go to any of the top cities anywhere you any any decently run center you would not see them below at 80 85 or 90 percent occupancy right now uh, so i think those two aspects is how i would classify my my i think two key major events for this industry at least in my short lifespan in this industry uh till now and i think both have been positive uh obviously covid to begin with was uh seemed very demoralizing with the lockdowns and lockdowns are demoralizing because you've got no clients sitting out of the spaces but beyond the lockdowns it's exciting yeah uh, so actually my experience has been sorry go ahead go ahead Good. My experience has been, you know, in talking with uh, design firms like Jensler or M. Moser across the globe, be it Singapore, be it US. Uh, even for the top corporates, uh, this uh, this way of people having the flexibility to work from anywhere is totally changing the concept of how you want to build offices, and that's where managed office space come up because the amount of uh, the two things which I had earlier alluded to the time to the timings, the higher flexibility you offer, and the time to the market, the speed with which we can bring in change, and the way, and the quality of work which you produce. So what the uh, so when you have a product which is which is factoring in the constant change which is happening, then the companies start looking at it that why, where does it make a business sense. So that I think would become the key as to what you want to achieve and how you want to achieve in the times to go forward. But rather than looking at a, if I have to set up office, I go, I take a building and then I build an office. I think that thought is slowly changing. Sure. Yes, Ashish. With, with, with your kind of uh, you know, observations, uh, uh, I think we can, we can then uh, uh, make closing remarks, but, but uh, very happy to hear sure. your thoughts on this. Yeah. Yes, Ashutosh. So I think uh, flexible workspaces, the name answers your question the way I see it. Uh, whether it's an upturn or it's a downturn, flexibility always helps when you're expanding or shrinking, whether you've got to bring down your costs whether you've got to expand your teams. I think in both situations is where flexible workspaces have, have helped the industry in terms of giving what they need at that point in time. So uh, the answer to your question, the way I see it is that, yes, we've, when, when there, is, there was a downturn, we did have many transactions where people were looking at downsizing. They had you know, a large footprint office and they wanted to bring it down to one tenth and uh, and skeletal teams so we we provided we were preferred option then and now what we are seeing people are walking through the doors and saying that okay we need uh, we were only you know 10 people office or 20 people office now we need a 60 people office or a 10000 square feet office or a 20000 and we are supplying it there so i think flexibility is the key and that's what we bring to the fore and uh, happy to continue to be in the segment and i think it's a it's a pleasure to be here Excellent. And I think uh, that's a very, very positive uh, note uh, as, as closing remarks. And I think uh, our developer friends will be very pleased to know that uh, there is supply shortage uh, and, and uh, downturn or up upturn, it doesn't really matter uh, for, for this uh, asset class. Uh, many uh, developers are already engaging uh, with uh, followers like yours, uh, yourselves. Uh, and and uh, that way, uh, a close partnership uh, you know, between uh, developers, uh, operators, uh, aggregators. I think uh, uh, we, we soon uh, will see uh, that uh, flexi workspace becomes the more dominant uh, kind of uh, you know, occupied category uh, within the commercial market. Uh, in India, it has been IT uh, over a prolonged time. Then it is BFSI. I, I think uh, you know, flexi spaces will 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 soon uh, find uh, a spot in the top three uh, in the next few months, uh, I believe, and that's where we are all uh, headed to. Uh, so uh, lo lovely up the, uh, ha having you with us, all, all, all three of you. It, it was a very engaging, very uh, very helpful uh, discussion. I do hope that the participants also uh, enjoyed it as much as uh, I did, and hopefully the three of you did. Uh, so with this, I, I would request uh, uh, Pushka, 
uh, to uh, you know, make the you know, closing uh, remarks and and on uh, CII's behalf on NROC's behalf. Uh, much uh, appreciation to the three of you for your time and for your insights. It was a pleasure um, host, hosting you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ashish. Thanks. Thank you. Pleasure interacting and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashutosh, and thank you to all thank the you. panelists uh, for being part of this uh, session today. Uh, and with this, we come to the close of uh, second day of the fourth uh, CI Real Estate Conference, uh, which was supported by our uh, knowledge partners, uh, Anarok Group, and our sponsors, Signature Global. Uh, what a day. And uh, both the days, uh, yesterday and today, uh, were really power-packed uh, with all the sessions, especially uh, the session with Mr. Puneet Chatwal today, uh, the inaugural session with uh, Mr. Tyag Rajan, uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Deepak Parekh, Chairman HDFC, and Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala, of course, the big bull of the Indian market. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for having tuned in uh, for both the sessions uh, uh, at the CI Real Estate Conference. Uh, very, very thank you. Thank you. Have a good day ahead and uh, happy weekend to everyone. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye.